I, um, I'm tempted here to, to talk about scandal, a biblical view of scandal, because I've talked about this a lot to, um, to various people who have been, I, I think, uh, shaken in their faith. Mm-hmm. Seeing scandal after scandal after scandal in the church, it seemed for a while there that every time you opened the, you were scared to open a Catholic newspaper. Or, mm. um, but I think it's really important as Catholics so we understand that um, right from the beginning, what is going on? What is going on in the world? Let me use an analogy. When you get two uh, weather systems. A high pressure system and a low pressure system and they collide into each other what do you get some sort of storm you get storms and the greater the difference in the pressure <laughs> the more violent the storms are that is a perfect description of the history of the church because what we're talking about is the kingdom of god invading slamming into the kingdom of this world which the scriptures make clear is under the dominion of the evil one <laughs> it's a fallen world and the kingdom of God is invading, and the gates of hell cannot prevail. We often think of that scripture in the reverse way, you know. Uh, the enemy's attack on us can't succeed. No, no, it's the other way around. He can't stop, you know, uh, our attack, uh, the attack of the kingdom of God. It's invading. And so there's a clash of kingdoms going on. And whenever you get the clash of kingdoms, you're going to get storms. Jesus lost one of the 12. Jesus lost one of the 12. The other apostles don't come off looking that great either, do they, when you read the scriptures? It's only after a lifetime of purification, of suffering, of proclaiming the word, of persevering, that they become the saints that we now rightly venerate. What the hell was going on in Galatia that Paul has to start his letter, you stupid Galatians? What was going on in Corinth that he has to excommunicate somebody from a distance? Mm. That on the same hand, these marvelous, magnificent gifts of the Holy Spirit are being manifested, and yet, corruption in the same body. Did Jesus not warn us that the kingdom of God would be like dot, dot, dot? You know, a field of wheat in which the enemy would sow tares. Mm. They would grow up together. But in the end, he would separate them. Did he not tell us there would be, there would be uh, wolves in sheep's clothing? Did he not tell us that he would have to separate, you know, the sheep from the sheep from the uh, the goats at the end of time? Did he not say it was like a fisherman bringing up a great load of fish, where he has to keep some and throw others out? Y- you know, we 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 shouldn't be shocked or surprised if we know the scripture and if we understand the biblical worldview that the church is going to have difficulty corruption scandal at the same time as it manifests saints who shine with blazing glory who light up everything around them advances in human culture advances in education and 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 uh, um, and holiness and human human rights and basic fundamental human dignity Everywhere the church has been, these things have advanced, you know? But there's also those weeds among the wheat. Why do we not expect to see that? We should expect to see that. I think what's troubling for many people is when they see it in the hierarchy, namely the very people they're meant to be obedient to. Was Jesus? Was Judas not one of the twelve? He was. You know? Um, yeah, it is disheartening. Yeah. Uh, but we like, have to I, I remember. I think that's what we feel, right? Like if it's, if it's people in my family who say they follow... Uh, the church, uh, and then they're sinners, then I can deal with that. But you understand, it's really difficult for yeah. people when it, they feel like many bishops don't have their back. Like it's LG, it's like LGBTQ Pride Month, and how many bishops have spoken openly helping their flock resist these these attacks, telling them to stay away from so-called gay pride parades when you don't see them, not even that they're not, well, they're not leading sometimes, and then it feels like, they're, they're also in bed with the enemy. So it's like, well, who the hell am I supposed to listen to? And how can I trust yeah. that I can listen to you? And when- I, think, I think this is one of the things the Lord is, is teaching us is, you know, look at the saints who lived in times of great difficulty in the church. You know, look at them and study their lives. In the confusion of the Reformation period, what did those mm. saints do? You know, it's easy, uh, and I'm not saying 
that that's not a problem because it is a problem. If a shepherd is not defending his sheep, he's gonna he's accountable to the Lord. And let me tell you something. I take that, you know, I, I sit in my own chapel on a daily basis and I go, Lord, forgive me in any way that I'm failing. Mm-hmm. Forgive me in any way that I'm I'm dropping the ball here. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna answer for them. I'm gonna answer for all of that. You know? So but I'm so I'm not excusing anything. But I am saying, look at those saints and what did they do? They didn't excuse their behavior because the bishop isn't acting the way he should be acting or they don't like this particular pope. They took responsibility for their area of competency. What has God called me to? And I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to be the saint that Jesus calls me to be in my call, in my vocation, in my sphere of influence. Amen. It is saints that reform the church. And in my little analogy of storms, you know, in the darkest, when a, when a two storm systems collide and it's dark, right? You don't see the sun. I, you know, I've been driving around in, at noon in a storm when there's twisters going and you can't see the, the lights in the car ahead of you. You pull off and hope you're not going to hit the ditch. Mm. But then all of a sudden you can see everything clearly. Boom. Everything's clear and you can see where everything is because mm. a flash of lightning came and it threw light on everything. Saints are the lightning in the midst of the storm. They throw light on everything. They help us to see the true parameters of what is going on and help us to get on board. And Mm. that's my call. That's your call. Mm -hmm. That's every one of us's call in our own environment, in the midst of the storms that we find ourselves. Be the lightning. Be the lightning. Make the difference. Be the saint. Mm-hmm. I can I can blame my not being a saint on anybody, but it ain't gonna hold up when I stand before the Lord. You know, Amen, He's yeah. given me the graces, the gifts. He's giving me all that I need to be a saint where I am right now. It's not whether we do great things; it's whether we do great things with we're little <sighs> things with great Amen. love. You know. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below, letting us know what you thought about the video.